Welcome to another episode of Warts and All here on the New Fish Channel. So, we've come down to the beautiful Cobhouse Fisheries just outside Worcester. This is a brand new fishery to me. It's the first time I've ever set eyes on the place. There's a lot of lakes on this great complex. They're full of carp, nice flat banks, open water. It's only the second time that Joe Kerris has ever seen this venue as well. So, what we're actually going to do today is look at it from your eyes as to how do I fish a brand new venue? What lines do I fish? How do I feed it? How do I target the certain species? There's some small carp in it, some younger fish. There's also some big old residents. I believe the fish in here, average 10 pound, some of them go up to 20. How are we going to tackle it? How are we going to find out how to get the best from our swim? The questions that you've always wanted answering. So we've sat ourselves down here on Wyatt's Pool, peg three. And Joe, everybody knows I'm not particularly well versed in commercial fishing. It's not my chosen thing, but when I look at this, it's typical commercial. Very typical, I'd say. Uh, plenty of water to go at. Um, not particularly any striking margin. So, tell me about this place. You've obviously seen it before, but this is the first time you've wet a line it. Yeah. Tell us about that. Right, so I've been here once before, full disclosure, uh, for the Drenning Knockout Cup competition used to run when we were at Matthew Street. A few years back, yeah. yeah. And we had a semi-final, four angles on this lake, Wyatt's. Um, and Lee Kerry actually won it over 500 pound. Now the fish then were all two to four pound and it was a race, total no, fish race. Fish. Yeah, total fish race. I think it's changed a lot since then. We've not done any homework, but while we were chatting to Guy, who owns a venue in the cafe, he did mention there were big fish, didn't he? He did, he said some 10 pounders up to. Well, so, well, totally know, different to when I came yeah. last time. I don't think there's the numbers in here that there was then, but there's still a lot of fish clearly. While we've been setting up, I've seen one roll close and I've seen one roll in the edge and they've both looked pretty hearty numbers, like yeah. six pound plus. So I think we're going to be in for a good day. So it's a long time since? Long time, yeah. yeah. Six, seven years. Eight years, maybe. Wow. So it's as virgin to you as it is to me, Absolutely. really, then, because we're, what we're saying is the fish have changed, um, they're mature. There's yep. obviously less of them because as they've grown yep. and some have been moved or, you know, so, uh, they've not stood the test of time, whatever. So. So we're not, totally approaching this as how I see it today. And, and there's an absolute, you know, clueless, headless chicken that sometimes I am when I come to a commercial. It's like, am I, is it shallow here? <laughs> is it all going to be margins? Do I, is it a brilliant, because I've, I've been places and it's like, oh no, you start short. And other places, oh no, you don't come short till end. And, yeah. you know, as a natural angler that's been raised and done that all my life, I love to build a swim, and you're a young, vibrant commercial angler who can well, just. 36 this week. I wish I was 36. <laughs> so, talk me through. How we're going to do it? Yeah, come on. Right, so me. the first thing when I come to my peg is obviously look at what's going on. And you saw me, as soon as I got down and set my box up, I was looking in the edge of the a. First pole. thing you did, yeah. So just having a look, see how deep the margins were, because the wind's blowing down here today. And I think there could be a real opportunity to catch some fish in the edge. Yeah. Now I found a spot. In fact, let's talk about that in a little bit. First thing I wanted to do after I did that was have a real good plumber. Because how can you fish without knowing what you're up against? Because in my head, I was driving here thinking I'll fish probably short pole, long pole on the bottom and maybe a bit of shallow. Yeah. And then the edges like later on. Up and down, as you say. Yeah. Down, yeah, One line, I'm... bottom and... Yeah, because like that. that's a great... On any commercial, that's a steady tick over yeah. no matter where you go. Yeah, even I get that bit, yeah. yeah. Um, however, I've put my plummet on and I've gone out to top kit and two yeah. and it was almost a full top kit deep. There's a which, gap. Which is deep for yeah. a, a summer commercial. This August, time of year. It's yeah. warm today yeah. and I'm thinking it's too deep that. And anyway, I put a plummet on in a deep rig for 30 metres where I plan to fish on the bottom yeah. and it was like a top four deep, top kit and one deep. Um, so that's immediately out for me. It's just too deep. In hindsight, I think I probably could have fished a bomb out there um, on the bottom. If I was to fish on the bottom today, a, a bomb yeah. might have been the best option. Yeah. Loose feeding and then shallow over the top of that. Brilliant. But I'm not going to do that. And I think all of my action today is going to be in close. Yes. So I found a spot on a top kit and one, which is, I've got the exact rig here. There is it. Just there, look. It is. For the viewers, 54 inches deep. What's that in old money? Yeah, 54 inches. Five foot? Uh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. five foot. And that's on a top kit and one. Now, I wouldn't want to fish really any deeper yeah, than six, that. 60 inches is five foot on it. Yeah, I, I yeah. wouldn't really want to target carp at any deeper water than that. Because you think this time of year, 
it's where the sort oxygen of is. Mid to late summer now. <clears throat> the water's warm. Yeah, we've got a lot of wind, so the fish should be confident. That's a really important thing. I just want to interrupt you because the one thing I've been talking to fishermen for years and years and years. When they spend a lot of time in shops, they go, how do I fish there? How do I fish that? And I always used to think it's impossible to tell you because was it windy when you went? Because yeah. it weren't when I went. And which way was wind blowing? And today, the wind's coming down the lake where the wind would end. Yeah. Warm wind, wind in shirt sleeves. It's, it's nice. Put a butter suntan cream on it. It was 17 degrees at 6 o'clock when I got here. Because um, I couldn't sleep over that excited about <laughs> watching the fishing. And um, so we're saying that the water, the water I just can't is warm. see them being on the bottom in any deeper water than that. And because the wind is moving that water around, fish that means all the water's warm, the fish are up there, shall The oxygen's good. So it's important to explain to everybody that you can't just have a textbook, this depth is this, that's like that. If it's deep, you fish shallow, you have to get... Because the conditions, time of year, uh, ambient warm. temperature, yep. has it been warm for a week or has it actually been freezing? Has it rained for the last three days? A lot of cold water's coming from a spring fed lake. Has that water gone to the bottom because it's cold because cold water sinks and push the fish up? Try and remember everybody to read the conditions. The bigger conditions, yeah? yeah. Is that then, uh, important to 100%, say? 100%, 100%. And I know just from experience, not here obviously, but everywhere else, if I go past that depth, if anything, that's too deep what I've got there. Yes. And I can see later on me having to come even closer in. So because you want to catch fish on the bottom, because that's usually the best yeah. way to catch them. Just to get off to a good start and yeah. as a tick over line until my margins kick in. Yeah. I think this will be a great line. It's deep enough to probably catch on it all day. Brilliant. But I might have to come shallower water. And all I've got is a... I've set two rigs up. Yeah. Four by 14 Cipri. Uh-huh. Um, and then pretty much a bolt down, just a little bit of a stagger. And I've also set a four by 18, same float, just in case, because it is a bit windy. Yeah. And I want to make sure that when I pop my pellets in, I'm right on top of it. This might have to... This, the light float might trundle through a bit. So I've set a heavier rig up as well, in case I need to absolutely hold just it still. It. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we'll come back to rigs, I think, because... It can be too much information yeah. to take in at one time. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but I think ring, rings, uh, sorry, rigs are really important um, because there's a lot of confusion about how do I shut it and all this. So we'll, we'll, come, we'll back come back to that later. So that's that's, so that's that. that, that, that. Top yeah. kit and one. Brilliant. It's going to be where I start. Yeah. And probably where I spend a lot of my day. Yeah. But I can't. The fish I've seen, a lot of them have been out, and it deep water is good for shallow fishing. So I've set up two shallow rigs out there. Yeah. Both big heads. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna just ping six mils out there and occasionally go out there. You never know, I might see an odd fish in my feed, bow uh -huh. waving around, yeah. I might not. But I can see that it's warm again, like we keep saying. I think there's gonna be some shallow fish to catch at some point. Brilliant, and they're carp. Yeah. So you'll be, let me guess, because uh, we've done this before um, and uh, you told me loads, you'll be looking to fish a foot deep with a reasonably long yeah. line above your thing, Turn which will, over come back to on the big bit yeah. but just out of interest for me so I'm like right because I'm still thinking well I've got to set my gear up um set two up really one is oh one foot two foot oh right okay right. Um, I'm, I'm already I'm learning it as well uh, and then finally where I think the bulk of our weight today will be caught is in the edge it always is at this time of year yeah the fish want to be in the shallow water because that's where the most oxygen is it's where the bait gets thrown in at the end of the match it's just the best place to be for these big fish, and I think there's going to be some big fish to catch. Is cover a massive part of that as well, do you no, think? No, depth. depth right, is because everything. I think everybody's like, well, I need to fish under that bush. And I, it took me half an hour's plumbing this morning to, until I found a spot I was happy with. Time well spent? Very much so. Well, time will tell. But ordinarily, in your ordinarily, experience. You've got to do it. Because here, the margins look identical. They're grassy banks, they look the same, every yeah. peg looks the same. So how do you choose? And I got my bank stick out and I went and I found a spot up here which I thought was about 18 inches deep. And in my head I'm thinking, yes, that's exactly what I want to find. But upon plumbing it up, it's on a steep slope like that, it's rocky. I thought, mm, I'm just going to put my arm in. I put my arm in just to see. There's a, a wire armoured cable running through the swim. Yeah, from the electric bottom, to the uh, aerators. For the aerators. Yeah. Um, so that just rules that out straight away. So although that depth is nice, yeah. I just think I'm going to have problems with it. Yeah. So then I thought, and it well, looks inviting because it's cut great, back and all this. Great. Oh, it would yeah. be. It would be great. So I had to find a different spot. Now everywhere else along that side is bottomless, really deep, four foot, no good yeah. at all. 
Now this side is deep again, but there's a little cutback where obviously someone's, either the bank's collapsed or something's happened. Yep. There's a little spot that came up and it's uh, exactly three foot. And I thought that looks lovely. I tied, I plumbed it up, found exactly what I wanted. I thought that is amazing. I've gone in with no plummet on just to check it. And I'm snagged every time. Again, I've put my arm in to see what it is. And there's obviously where the bank's collapsed, there's a bit of grass on the bottom. No good again. So even though I've found exactly what I'm after, flat, the depth, the depth everything's yeah. bang on, it's no good because I'm going to be snagged all the time. So Brilliant. I've spent, again, finding another spot, which just so happens to be two foot this way, in a little alcove. It's a touch deeper, but I can get right up against the bank, which I like. Yep. And it's a little bit of a slope, which we'll talk about when we're fishing, why that's important. And I think that might be a nice little spot. But again, without trying and spending my time picking my spots, I'd have been either fishing on a snag or fishing over a wire armoured cable. Yeah. So, yeah. so it shows how important time well spent. That's what we've already discussed. It's like you searching for a snag free feed. Yeah, yeah, and people go, why do you keep plumbing up? How many, how many times are you going to plumb up? I'm not actually plumbing up. First of all, I found my depth. Mm. Then I'm actually dragging my bomb along the bottom and I'm trying to find a nice clear spot where I can get a clean pick up. The fish are there. Yep. Can I hook them there? Yeah, yeah. So the fish would be there, wouldn't they? And yeah, yeah. they'd be in that other spot. They'd be over the top of that grass to be loving it. Yeah. Could you catch them there? Yeah. Probably not, because you can't get that clean, nice clean hook, nice flat dinner, dinner plate. Yeah. So and, I, and I think it's really important that, because a lot of my fishing is margin fishing at the moment. I'm doing loads of it. And I'm quite well known for like moving about. Like I'll go up and down the edge, finding new spots throughout the clean, match. Clean spots Here, I won't be able to do that. No bait. No bait. Yeah. And starting again. There's terminology there, isn't there? Clean, I'm looking for a clean spot. Mm. And, and I was thinking, well, I thought you got a clean spot because you plumbed at the start. Yeah. What you mean is... Fresh water. Fresh water with no baiting, yeah. where the fish aren't confused and yeah. all Bait rattling over. around. And I haven't got the option here today. Clean spot, they come up, pick you up, because you're, you're going to set a little trap and catch them. So I'm going to have to fish Fantastic. it, whereas I would fish pace normally. I'm going to have to... I can't do that here. It's not, it's not right. Because you need more room to work. The bottom's too slopey. Eh? I yeah. need more room to work because I hop about a lot. Here, I've literally got one little spot that big, so yeah. I'm going to have to be really careful with how I'm going to approach it. But we'll like, Brilliant. But that's and, quite and, interesting. And that reminds me, and this is really important, and, and back to what I was saying when people say, what would you do at so-and-so? <clears throat> you can't decide the night before what you're going to do. So, Joe's a paystead. It's quite, it's quite a common fact. <laughs> and he's just give it away, Andy, because I, I can't fish paste there. Because that's what he wants to do. Because it's summer, the fish are gill feeding, they're, they're right chewing ground bait, they're loving it. And then these are the pace fish as well. Big, Big fish. fish, they love paste, they'll slurp it up. So Joe's like, I'll just smash them up on paste. Not today, you're not, because that's not suiting it. So you can't decide the night before, as a even as a pleasure angler. Not, not even just, night before. Not just Once a night angler. Sat on my peg. That's right. So you've had to come fully prepared with an op open mind. mind. Really important. I think a lot of club matches are in that situation you hop around venues a lot don't you you don't go to, when you're a club angler you don't go to the same place every week no, you no. maybe go here this week and we go laugh at the next That's or right. whatever so you might only see it once so it is it is important you can't go yeah i'm going to fish paste. here yeah. rather than at home oh next match is at so and so i'm going to fish paste there because that's what it will last year yeah. not on that peg not on that wind yeah, exactly. not on that day not three days after it's been raining for three days which is the intricacies of the match fishing absolutely Fantastic. Have a look at Great the, insight. Bait because it's yeah. simple, but it needs yeah. to. Well, it looks simple, but it clearly isn't. So, Joe, on your side tray, you've got pellets, pellets, and, and more pellets, but they're not. They're not all the same. It's no, awesome. um, there's an eight pint bait limit here, which immediately, obviously, limits to what you can do. That can be three pints of other baits, and then or eight pints of pellets and a mixture of. Yeah, two. eight pints max with a maximum yeah. of three pints of. Corn, maggots, I think casters, it's maggots. Worms, yeah, yeah. Now I didn't want to go down the maggot and stuff route because I didn't know a lot of these lakes you'd come to and they can be full of little rud and stuff. I didn't want none of that. So maggots were out for me on my first visit. I'd like to fish paste, but like I said, one kilo limit of ground bait here. It's gonna to be tough for me. You want to I feed, feed, I feed, bait, I feed yeah. yeah. So rules it out a little bit. Hemp. Not really, I don't like hemp and corn. And I like hemp in the summer, but I don't really like corn. So that means that it's a pellet job for me, out and out pellets. So maximizing on your fishery bait limits, yep. which limits, actually you've then turned what the word limit into no limit because eight pints of bait is enough. Yeah, I've got no idea. But by simplifying the choice, yep. 
minutes. They've then increased your capacity. Yeah. Which is smart thinking. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah. Um, my, yeah and, I, and I've kept it simple. So I've got some six mil pellets, um, for fishing short and shallow. They're just the fishery ones. They're just yeah. screttings. Yeah. Um, very nice. So I've got I got two bags of them from the shop. Yep. And then I got a bag of micros, which I've over soaked. Some I do quite a lot for yeah. edge fishing. Um, to, to I do like what? what? Why? When you say over soaked, to what? To soften them? To the what? Make them heavy? Make what? them heavy. Just puff them up to make them as big as they got, they will go. Because they've they'd be no good them. on a method feeder. They break up completely. Yeah. But for edge fishing, I think they're brilliant. And obviously, one bag. What I do, I um, put them in a, a nice sort of size tub. Put about a centimetre too much water in and just leave them open topped. Open top, to let them to absorb swell. it up, go back to them and put another load in. Yeah, because they're big, they're as big as they'll get. Unlike when we do them, like we saw, the method where you're trying to restrict them, before, yeah, to keep them still with some stickiness. Yeah, now because the, the margins are, are so deep, if I was to feed them, because I've only got that dinner plate scenario. Yeah. They would probably break up on the fall and go over too big of an area. So what I've done is I've got some of the Sonia Bates Pro Paste, which is really sticky. Yeah. And I've just, over my wet pellets, added a sprinkle so that it allows me to feed it in little clumps rather than loose. Stuck it together. So that'll get to the it's bottom. The filler. That'll get to the bottom, but break up once it's on the bottom. Yeah. But it allow me to get it exactly where I want them to go. Yeah, so there's no coming off that. Now coming off it, it'll show you the pot when we get fishing. It exits the pot really cleanly, it'll get down in a clump, and then I can present Keep over it tight. Yeah. yeah. Keeping it as tight as I possibly can. Fantastic. So that's that. And then for the hook baits over the top, I've got some nice bloaty six mil expanders. Yep. Um I'll show you how I fish them later. That's something I really they like. They look doing. like they're still wanting to for just the just, just thinking. But I yeah. will put two on the hook. So we'll, sh we'll talk to you about that in right. a bit. And then I've got a couple of... What, is that because it looks more like a piece of paste to it then? Just can't, can't help yourself, can it? Big old bait. <laughs> Something my old mate Adam Richards taught me about and it's, it's amazing. Uh, and then I've got a couple of options for shallow fishing. I've got some light pellets and some red Your, red, your, your favourite red. reds, yeah, yeah. And that's it. Are they a Man United tub? Man United tub, yeah. yeah. Although they'd be useless if they were Man United rubbish. <laughs> so yeah, simple pellets. Brilliant. Pellets, because I think when you come to a new place, you can't go wrong with pellets. No, and, and a, bit, a bit like we've touched on, you've, to make, if something's gonna work, the chances are on a commercial fishery in what we're in, mid-August? Yep. Mid to late August. Mid to late August, yep. You're probably gonna be looking at a sizable weight. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I say, we've purposely done no homework. But looking at the fish we've seen roll and stuff, I can't imagine the weights are smaller on this lake. No, because we'd have to presume that we're looking at a bit of in excess of Therefore, you probably feel you're going to, I mean, I've just seen a tail come out over your shoulder <laughs> and it's blowing bubbles as he's swimming down the lake. He got, oh, a, he got a belly like me. Um, you're thinking, if I'm going to make something work, I'm going to need plenty of it. Yeah. So you're not so going to do with the fatal hemp, mistake of having a, a bit of, of everything. Yeah. Which people go, I'll take one tin of meat one tin of corn, one tin of hemp, part of casters, part of meat, part of pellets. What are you going to do with that? Mm. It, it, but that's Spread the yourself thin. That's what are you going to do with that? Tin, yeah, of course that, it is. I've done it. The jack of all trades, master of none I've scenario, it. isn't it? Yeah. But um, can we catch some fish? Cause Let's go for it. It's looking good, isn't it? Well, I can't wait, so I know you can. <laughs> Get on it. So we've got, we've mapped out the swim. Yep. And the various fishing areas in your swim. I always get that confused peg. So you've got your peg and then you've got your swims. That's probably the terminology that everybody else uses. Uh, we know what we're going to feed and we've kind of roughed out what rigs they are, but we'll go into detail with them later. So I think for me, especially, and I'm talking from personal experience, um, and I, I touched on the fact that I'm a bit more of a natural um, fish, as in I fish more natural venues as opposed to commercials. And I'm always like, right, where do I start? Because I want to feed. I'm yeah, a feeder feed by them, nature. You want to try and gather a load of fish, don't you? Yeah, because I'm thinking, right, I need to put some bait in and I, I want to feed my margins early and I want to do this. And I know for a fact you're not going to do that because I know you. And and I, and I have fish enough commercial fish food and I have obviously listened to me uh, pals and the rest of the anglers that do that. And you're probably going to, um, what I call, just ease your way yeah. and, and catch 
and I call it catching one fish at a time, which is a bit of a stupid statement. Yeah, because you can only catch one fish. Because you can only catch unless you're going to double up like Danny Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I mean is you're going to feed for one, yep. catch him, and, and then feed again. for the next. Yeah. That is, is that fair to say that that is probably That's fair to say. We a don't... fundamental important part of commercial, commercial fishing. fishing. Especially early in the session, because as we know, the fishing get, tends to get better as the day goes on. To start with, because we're totally naive and green to this venue, the last thing I want to be doing is putting bait all over the swim. So I'm going to literally feed one spot to start with, gauge the response, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. It might be, because of the depth of the margin, I might, and the wind, I'm really liking this wind. We might catch down there quite early, Yeah. but we won't worry about that just for now. Yeah. We're going to go in on top kit and one, Brilliant. and we're just going to gauge the response. I'm not going to put any bait in for shallow or anything yet. That wind looks tricky to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would you set yourself up for a difficult day? I, I'm, yeah. I'm potentially just putting, pushing fish away from me rather yeah. than bringing them to me. So okay. we'll start here, and if all goes well, we'll still be on it in two hours' time before we go down there. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to put like four pellets in, like a lot of people do. I'm going to put fill my pot up, yeah. which is a medium sort of pot. Twenty pellets. Yeah. A nice little consignment. I'm going to put them in nice and low. Consignment. There's a word. Far back marker. And then I'm going to do. I'm going to flip my rig up wind. What? I'm hoping that my pellet sort of comes in and rests just that side. Yeah. And then by the time the toe and the wind catches up, it should find itself a nice little home over them pellets. I see. If I put it downwind, it's already fight. I'm fighting against it to start so with. So you're looking for that just little uh, resting, the right amount of tension. That little bit of because yeah. of course if what you, how much depth have you got or how much over depth are you? About two inches. Two inches. So bottom of your float, just below bottom of your float body. Yep. Therefore, there's two inches of slack in your line, which people think well, that's not a lot, but it actually does create a bit of a loop. Yeah, um, see. A sag, a sag. Because the wind and the tension is sort of catching up yeah. itself. Yeah. So you're just using that to your advantage, rather than what most people naturally do is let the wind. Lay the rig out to the left and use that as a tool. You're actually flicking it in and letting that bore almost in your rig. Because you see, it's sitting, it. sitting quite nice. That's that lovely. Even though it's before before, it's quite light for these depth for the depth and condition. Yep. It's actually sitting not bad. But you've got a back shot there, haven't you? Yeah, I've got two number nines halfway up. Yeah. Just to allow me to anchor it, I wouldn't hesitate to put more on. It's quite interesting because we're not at any liners or anything, which. Would go with the fact that we think that they're mainly big fish in this lake. If yeah. there are a lot of smaller fish, F1s and whatnot, nine times out of ten when you rattle your pellets and you get a lot of false bites and stuff. Right, so you're saying there's a few big fish there, I not think, tons of little fish. I therefore, think looking straight away, that's my, what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we could just be trap setting yeah. for ten big fish today, for all yeah, I know. Because yeah. it doesn't matter how you get to your target weight, if there is a target, because of course we don't know what the target is, but. This is all about reading the situation. Mm -hmm. You've done a little bit of homework because, as you know, we're putting ourselves in the shoes of uh, people watching that it's first visit. They've got this match, it's at Cobb House. So you've had a quick chat with the owner. What sort of fish are in here? He's gone, I've got some stockies in here which are quite small. There's a few of them, and then the rest of them are 10, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. He even said the word 20 pound. Um, yeah, that's big, isn't it? Yeah, heaven help us. Um, so you've took that into consideration thought i'm not going to be catching 100 fish here i could be catching 15 fish because i'm right in saying that which you know, oh little indication there you don't when the big fish you don't catch 50 great big carp it's that'd be 500 600 700 pounds exactly. that that's them sort of weight so when you're catching small fish um generally you could be looking at 15 to 20 fish when they're so big yeah and if if I don't know how long we're going to fish for today, but if you were in a five hour match, four carp an hour when they're big is a big, big weight. Absolutely. There we go. There we go. And, that. and that's one of them. So we were just dead patient. We just potted them pellets in. Yep. You've, fished, you've set your trap, you call it traps in, and I've, in my description, is fish for one fish. And that feels like a good fish. Because there were no indications, it just picked it up and there you were. I like it's a quick point just about plain fish. I always like to have a section ready. Yeah, I saw that. I have it just there. And I think it's so important because 
these big fish. You've got to just take your time with them and get them in. And you've got the rest of your pole behind you. Yeah. Which then that section, if it then carries on going, you've bought yourself a bit of time. Yeah. But right. I think it's important to have one section because you can add that bed quick. Yeah. Whereas a, getting get three or four sections well. on, you run the risk of breaking your pole. Yeah. You see, it feels a good fish, this, straight away. I think it's like a monstrous, but it's a nice fish. It's beautiful. And it's a good start. Nice comment. Lovely fish, actually. I'll tell you what, we'll be uh, well all right with them, won't we? Gorgeous. It's actually a big F1, that, you know? Is it there, right? Yeah. Well, it looks like it to me. I'll have to get the encyclopedia of fish spot. <laughs> it's a big one. Big F1 if it is, but it looks like a great big F1 to me, that. Oh, yeah. I'd agree with that. Lovely fish. So, great start. And it sort of proves what we're talking about. It's We don't know what we're fishing for. No. But, I mean, if you can do that, repeat that times 20, you're going to be here. And, and you've started off, you've not got a bit scattered all over your, your peg. Um, and you're probably expecting to go out, rattle some more pellets in. And wait again. And catch another one. One at a time, four pound a piece, five an hour, 20 pound, five hours, 100 pound, and that's without the edge any big factor in your edging because as we all know, you can you can catch eight in the edge really quickly. Yeah. Now that's an interesting point I've just done there. I always dip my pot to, to wet my pellets a little bit. To what's, what's the reason break the surface tension, so I want them pellets to sink as quickly as possible. Isn't it funny, because I thought you'd do it because it helps to stick them in the pot so they don't bounce there out. There is that advantage it's not everybody, as well. Not everybody's as smooth at shipping out. No, as, and there is that advantage, yeah. of course. But you like the fact but that I like it's, the fact that it helps them break the surface tension. Because you're not dropping them fast. It's not like when you're catting them, because obviously when you're catting them, they walk away a bit more force, break the set, surface tension yeah. and sink. Whereas if they were just loosely dropping in, um, they wouldn't have enough momentum in them to... I've got you. That's fair. So I was really happy. Oh. Well, you didn't have to wait a long time, did you? No, but. Felt oh, almost a bit small fishy, that. I'm actually going to feed again. Because you've had a bite? Just because I've had a bite, and I, I like. Not because you're recasting, really because you've had I a like bite. I like the idea of setting the trap each and every time I go out. Yeah. To repeat the process. Because you're not lathering pellets. See him, then. I did see him. You're not lathering pellets all over your swim. You're keeping it nice and compact. You're not dropping them from a big eye, you're just... I'm trying to keep them on the bottom, and I did mention in now a little intro -y bit that I might have to come even closer in. Because of the depth. Because of the depth, so that's in the back of my mind as well. Yeah. Um, but we'll obviously gauge the response on that. One thing I'm noticing, the fish that are moving about, they're actually rolling as they're going down, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They're not They're not something about muggable or no, anything no, like no. that. No, they, they... They look like they're eating to me. Yeah. And I think that's the breeze, into it? just creates a little bit of movement at water. I mean, puts the fins up. I always think it, that were an indication, okay. isn't it? It puts the fins up and it makes them a bit more active, yeah. which I think then reminds them that they're moving and they want to eat and it, yeah. I think that it's a fish catching kind of day. Oh, feels yeah. that way, it? Warm. It may be in a minute. In a minute, that we have to have a look at shallow fishing. Yeah. For now, pellets are instant. So if I do decide to go shallow, I can feed them for 10, 15 minutes, and then hope to catch one or two. There you go. Is that a skin? That, that is that? something very small. What that is? Roach. So oh. I like how you've done that. So I think that's what that other fish was. Yeah, you did say it was small fish, didn't you? So we talked about the wind. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's it's a really windy day, and you'll have factored that in with your float size. You've factored that in with how much line that you've got between your float and your tip. But in your case, because you are an advanced pole angler, advanced commercial pole angler especially, you try and keep that line between your float and your tip to a minimum. A lot of people, naturally, um, to make life easier for themselves, want to fish a lot longer line. Yeah. Because that's a natural thing to do. The disadvantages of that, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, is that 
you can't quite keep your float as tight over the top of that bait as you'd like to because you're not quite got as much control. But that's where the back shot comes in because that would allow you a little bit more um, leeway. Yep. Now, a lot of people watching this are probably not, um, they probably don't have the time, the patience, or sometimes the eyesight to be fortunate enough to buy some of our great floats and tie their own rigs. So some people would buy a ready-made rig. Would you recommend putting a back shot on that as well? 100%, I, I rarely ever fish without them. It just and gives you that control? Yep, it just gives you that control. It gives you a buffer against the wind. You can see if I was, if my float was direct to my pole tip, my pole tip would be, con float would be constantly bashing against the pole tip. Yeah. Whereas it's bashing against that shot and it's still allowing the float to sit in nice. What's that lovely? Considering uh, it's choppy, it's windy. Yeah, it's windy. Yeah, it is a windy day. Um, and that float is sat lovely and stable, can't fault it. Yeah. So, yeah, always, always, always. You, even if you buy, I mean, look, it's really windy. Even if you buy ready type rigs, grab some number eight stops and use them as your back shots. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and just for people that, obviously, because it'd be hard for us to film right up to the back shot and show you exactly what's happening, but <clears throat> what is actually happening is that the shot is keeping Joe's line sort of vertical, uh, or as vertical as it can be, directly from his pole top. And he's not letting that back shot sink right down, he's just having it touching or just under the water. So the weight of it is supported by the pole, which then creates a little bit of slack between his float and the back shot, which takes out, as it's moving, and he's, so I don't know where, which camera I'm on, probably not on <laughs> either, am I? Um, You're on that one. I'm on this one here, look. So, his float's here like that, and his pole's moving, but because the, sh the shot is keeping this bit of line slack, it means that his, his pole tip's moving, but his float's not. Whereas it'd be impossible to keep that line slack without the back shot, and what would happen is his float would be going up and down, jigging around, which is not, not the way when you're trying to fish on deck. And, um, and that's a fantastic tip for anybody who's, who's watching. And of course, I think you'd even still fish that, Joe, if, if it was calm, still warm. Always, never fish without it. Even yeah. in the margin where I've got a really short line, we'll talk about that when we're fishing it, I've still got number eight back shots on there. It's just the ever present on my rigs. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that, but I've started feeding shallow already. Well, I was just about to say, what, what's, what prompted you to do that? I just feel like I'm not getting the amount of signs I was expecting. Okay. Saying that, I'm just foul up on this. Yeah. So, I think I might have to, to get to my target, I might need a shallow swim. Okay. I'm just thinking ahead. Do you think the fish are going to be up? I think, I'm just thinking ahead. Brilliant. And it's, giving, it's going to give me another option. Because you, you've just you've just said something there, which and, and it's easy when you sat here to pick up on the little subtleties. Um, and I'm and I'm putting myself in the minds of because I'm I'm viewing you today, and I'm <laughs> I'm watching this, and I'm getting lessons from it. So I just feel that it's the right thing to do. Well, that's all well and dandy if you're you, um, but I'm not you. I'm me and. You just feel it, it make it obvious to me why you're doing it. But I think you then explained it, but didn't really know you were explaining it by saying, because I'm just not getting as many indications as I thought I was. Because you thought you thought ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And then you'd be, because you'd think there were more fish there. So it's like, it's gone under, and every time you've picked up, it's not just been an indication, it's probably been a bite. Um, you've bumped that small fish, you've had a roach, you've had that one. F1, but you don't think there's fish swarming around your so there's not pellets at, at the moment. It's very much probably because it's too deep, and you're not you feed into the deck. Yeah, and I, I think I can explain that. Stop me if I'm talking rubbish. You feed into the deck because you're putting them all in in one go, as opposed to what you're doing there because you fed you fed three times more. As in, I don't mean more pellets, I mean often. more often with that catapult to catch a shower than you have done by dumping your 20 pellets short. So, 
because you're trying to maintain the fish up shallow, you're flicking a few pellets in, which is keeping bait in the upper layers for longer. Ah, medallion. Medallion. For his own badge, look. I'll tell you what this is, Michael, too, too deep. deep. Too deep. So we're going to rectify that. Brilliant. So I jumped in there and said it before you because I want to know if I'm getting it. Um, and you're getting into train of thought because I'm looked. talking his way through it. And we've just been Two talking or three about there that, that looked them. So, first thing you're doing is taking a bit of depth off and find a spot. What, coming shorter? I'm trying to find a spot. So, yes. Really close in. But fish aren't frightened of your nets. I think that's a, a big thing, what people. Because they're used to them. They're used to your nets now. Well, they know that so full. deep. Even like it's just going to be a top gear, it is. Yeah, because we're here to catch them, not, not fish. Just like that. I've had four bites out there and only landed one fish. Yeah. Which is a poor, poor ratio, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned. See, that so much happened here already. And um, me and you were talking over a cup of tea this morning in the cafe that that decision making and how quick people are to change. And, um, and you instantly, 15 minutes in, Change. You've changed, and that is an experienced match angler's trait. You've quickly identified what needs to come shallower. You've come in, you've plumbed it, you've found yourself what eight, ten inches shallower. Yeah, well, it's fifth, that's 47 inches deep now. And what were we, 56? Yeah, 54. So it's a good chunk shallower, yeah, but more importantly, it's closer. So, yeah, you might shallower. just keep the fish down. Yeah. So, we'll readjust the camera, shall we? And then see if we can Brilliant. catch them in. Um, so we're not going to change anything feed-wise for now. So you're just going to do the same thing same in thing. a shallower depth. Yeah, and it, it was brilliant to watch you because you've gone, that's it, and you've bit your rig off, chopped it down, shortened it, so that you've still got that, probably even a little bit shorter because you can do that now, the shorter lash because you're fishing closer in. Mm -hmm. And the fearless change Yep. That you made so quickly, I think is uh, a great example of the way that somebody like yours brain works. Checking here, fish. ADHD, in. you mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> rapid, rapid changes um, get results, don't they? Well, the problem is not that the commercials are a race these days, but they really reward people who are efficient. Yeah. By that I mean I could hook 12 carp out there and only land four of them. I might only like might only hook seven or eight down here, but I'm, there's a good chance I'll land a lot more of them. So Therefore, if, the net result is great. Ex exactly. And I think efficiency is the number one, which is why when we were talking about the margins, it's really important to spend your time getting it dead right. Yeah. Thinking about how we're going to feed it when we do go down there. And it may be that fishing shallow and just slapping slapping them to death by that I mean grinding out a bite yep might, that might get me my five carp an hour much much more efficiently than doing this mm -hmm. and they're the sort of decisions that you have to make fairly quickly and not be frightened of it and trying to read <clears throat> read the conditions I'm not getting any bites carp are quite responsive pellets quite uh, an instant bait, mm -hmm. it's warm, it's the right time of year, it's a nice colour, there's a nice wind on, there's no reason why the fish won't be feeding, is your natural train of thought, therefore the lack of response or lack of uh, fishing there so far means... Yeah, it was more than happy with the number of bites we were getting, it was just the conversion rate was poor, you know, you, if, you, if you hook, hit four bites and only land one fish, Yes. Just not good enough to me, and it's enough to make me change. This is brilliant because that is the what's and all information that everybody wants to know. Um, what, what makes the difference? What, why does he catch 150 pounds and I only catch 100 pounds? Well, because I made a decision quicker, changed quicker, read the situation quicker. Um, it might be wrong. No, no, it's great, but but it, but I think if we talk uh, openly and honestly about what we think we know what, we, what we're saying, and that's how our brains work, the what side of the what's and all is that, well, that were a 
that were a load of rubbish. Um, it just goes to show you the brain, train of thought, because we don't know how this is going to pan out. No. And it could be that the fish feed later on. It could be that uh, they are shallow. It could be that they're all in the margin. You could be fishing in twice the depth that the fish want to feed at. And time will tell. But sitting there, scratching your head, waiting and waiting and waiting for something that's not going to happen, clearly isn't always the right direction. And one thing that... Or so we think. Um, just to um, talk about as well. I'm much more inclined to throw bait in now. I'm closer in. Go on. Because the, because the fish... I'm so close to myself, they're much less likely to come right up and cause me issues with liners and foul lookers and stuff. So That's it does give me the option of throwing bait in, which is 10 times more effective than potting. So, so a mix of the two might, might work really well. So just give me some clarity on that. Because you're closer, fish aren't as closer happy. to you, yeah. they're not quite as excitable. Yeah. They're not quite as uh, relaxed and getting Easy. carried away with the souls. Yeah. Um, you think it'll keep them at bay. They'll be, they'll be sort of creeping their way around trying to pinch bait from the narrow mar uh, the near margin that you're almost fishing it's your deep margin that isn't it um that slows them down a bit therefore keeps them on the bottom mm -hmm. uh, i've learned something there because i would have just thought we were talking about the same process as we were one section further out but you're saying because it's a bit shallower because it's also a little bit closer to you that has a calming effect on the fish. No, well, that one's not calm, is it? Not calm, but when I hooked him, felt a big head bang. But you recognise that as being a big fish. So I think that that's the fish in the mouth. Yeah. Which they were lacking at top and one. Uh -huh. We've had one flyaway bite that's unmissable. Yeah. And hopefully this will end up in a fish in the mouth, in the in the net. So, Brilliant. Which proves that that decision was the correct one. Because there's a lot of this top kit fishing on commercials at the moment. Um, and it it looks boring, it looks slow. That works well. But it but it's efficient and that is what we're after. That's a very well hooked carp. What I'm not I'm not gonna give it ten out of ten for prettiness, but it's a nice weight builder. In the top six pound? Top lip? Top lip. Because you're straight over the top of it. And it's a carp, not an F1. Yeah. And it's had a little ding. Because you're straight over the top of it, you've been able to just bump like that and you've hooked them in top And lip. obviously threw that bit of bait in. We had a lovely clean bite. Do you think when you're throwing bait in like that, there's as much going off with noise as there is with feed? It's all about the noise. Not necessarily the feed. Not necessarily the amount of bait or anything like that. I'm still going to pop my little pile in. So I've always known that I've got something exactly where I want it. Yeah. But I'm much more inclined to throw pellets over the top. The venue I fish at Shearsby um, all the time, just throwing two pellets over your bait float all the time is really effective in fishing this close in. Mm -hmm. And it will, nine times out of ten, you throw that pellet on the float and you'll get an instant reaction. Yeah. Which it blows my mind that they're on the bottom, but yet the noise triggers them into snapping at it, I think. Something happens. Yeah, they just can't help themselves. So I was much happier then. No, no, because the bite, or should I say, the lack of indications, the fact that it was a bite, you looked at the top lip. Uh, and it was a cat. It, it, I'm almost going to say you predicted it, um, which I think is proof. Um, you made a change when, it, when, it's, when it's reacted. I do think there might have been a case for using 8mm pellets here today as well. Go on. She's put, obviously put a terrible feed then. Um, which is obviously an interesting observation, but they're obviously big fish. Even that one was six pounds. There's obviously a few roach about. Yeah. Maybe eight mils would have been an even better call. To, to put the roach off. Put the roach off. I could feed a few less, but make more noise. Yeah, because that's the thing that... Um, and it, it came... So it became obvious to me not that long ago when we were at a commercial fishery and ultimately two mil, four mil, six mil, eight mil and even bigger pellets 
are all the same it's all the same bit and ultimately when they break down or as they're breaking down it's the total amount of if you like pellet ingredients that finishes up on the bottom so and and i think that i think that day that Back to a 50 kind of, 50 mix weren't sure about him were we he was very very on the drop that one um as it were explained to me that well i'm actually feeding the same amount of bait total bait just in less um right individual sum it up amazingly well for me the ground bait um when people used to say about fine ground baits not filling the fish up as well as much as a coarse ground bait uh -huh. and his argument was but if i take a pork pie and put it through a blender it's still the same pork pie it's just in a it different is. make course it is it's a still the same and a mashed potato exactly it's still the same <laughs> still the same it's still the same amount of calories you're just taking it in a different way yeah of course you and it, i was like yeah that's dead right isn't it so yeah. it's like yeah. a, a, a ground bait a fine ground bait is still the same pellets yes. it's just been ground differently <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so you can still feed the same amount of bait feeding four eight mils as you can feed in eight yeah four mils it's just less stuff on the bottom so they're more like which is important if you're trying to pick up an odd fish here and there attract them by noise you can create the noise with a bigger pellet but you can feed the same amount with less therefore Ooh. create less confusion and probably optimize bites Thanks. Yeah. I know summer, Mick. I would love to be. I'd love to be wrapping a great big ball of paste around a size 12 here today. <laughs> ah, because every time it went on, you'd be like, "That's one." A few more indications. This going. Hmm. Would you attempt to fish paste there? Yeah. In that depth. 100. percent That'd be the that'd be the place I'd fish it. I think. But it won't be ideal. The margin is where I like to fish paste, but the, they're just way too slopey here today. Mm. So your pace is always forever tumbling down, which makes it a real tricky fish. Now that looks like a big fish. Yeah. Not convinced it's in the mouth. But it no, could I be. saw that little. Yeah, no, I wasn't yeah, convinced. That little shake. Which is making things a bit confusing, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, because we've hooked. How many have we hooked? We've hooked three there and only got one out. Do you still think it's because it's too deep? Yes. Yeah. 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 So maybe that we have to. Which is brilliant. Other options. Yeah. Which I think. Because I'm right in saying obviously you've plumbed it up and it comes in at that depth right to the edge and then quickly comes up. Yeah. Almost like a bathtub. Yeah, I think I'll be able to find a spot. In between this depth and the margin depth, though, in the edge, and maybe that's might be a nice place to fish our pellets. A deep margin. Just a deep margin off the bank a bit. Um, I'll probably mm. do it to my right, so I can leave that edge clean because I, I mentioned about that. That's a big thing for me. That is. Yeah. Um, creating an impact. I, I really believe that's a big thing. Um, I think fish are so tuned into bait getting dumped in at the end. Trying to recreate that in, in a smaller fashion. It's yeah. a big, big thing. I tell you what is interesting. You've obviously had an F1, had a carp, and a little bit of a carp, and come off two. And some people, I think, in this scenario, will be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, the, the, this is it. It's great. I'm getting bites, and I, I've lost two. If I can, if I can, do, do that without losing them, I'll be doing well." Whereas you're actually looking at it and going, mm, "It's not quite like this." No, I despite. Me going, well, there's obviously fish there, and we just, what am I doing? And somebody who's probably inexperienced at this kind of fishing like me will be going, what am I doing wrong? I'd think I were doing it wrong. Whereas you're actually going, I'm fishing at my place. Yeah, that's all I'm thinking. Fish coming to my bay. Yep. Yeah. And that's, they do. that's the hardest place to get a bite there because you're fishing so close to you. So if I fish where they actually want to be, then we could have it away. Want to be, yeah, yeah, we could have it away. Yeah. So I'm going to try and get this one out. Which? Oh, mate. Right. Hey, we're not happy. We're not happy. I'm not happy. Brilliant. Mate. No, it's, this is this is perfect because this is a plenty of warts here, Joe. In fact, there's oh, one there's there. more warts. There's one, there's one on your own there. I know it's not to scale. <laughs> I think 
that's a good they, point. They were once shallow up there. We're going to find a little spot. Yeah. Somewhere. Might be here. Yeah. And we're going to find another spot to fish. And go again. And, and we're going to go again. And maybe that's shallow. So we'll keep that going. But I'm getting a lovely collection of medals down here. Well, I've seen um, McDonald's stuff with less, less badges. <laughs> So we'll, uh, should we uh, see if we can come up with some goods for the viewers? Listen, that's what we're here for. What's and all? What's and all? Let's get on it. Let's find a spot. I'm going to reiterate this, and sorry if I keep repeating myself, but quick change. You've not hung around, you've not sat on your laurels, you're not sitting there well, morning, quick, move forward to another. Quick recap, We've, we hooked three there, did we? Only landed one. Yeah. Not good enough for me. No, because the fish are feeding, that's what you're thinking, because yep. they come into your pellets, but they're I've not putting any in there. I've got to find somewhere that I can catch them. Go on then, why are they? Same again, have you just, what, so, another? There's a few reasons why I've... How deep is that? Three, three, exactly three foot. Three foot. Right, and a few reasons. I w I'm desperate to keep that left hand edge clean till later. Yeah. And I, I just feel like, Three foot could be a really good depth. It's a considerable amount shallower than what that top kit line was. And yep. to find that depth, I've had to go up the bank a bit. So I'm not right in the edge, but I'm about a metre off the edge, something like that. Yeah. Found a nice little slope. Yeah, because that was four foot seven when it, we yeah, were started. Like that. And you've come back to Took uh, a ten inch or three so foot off ten. That. Yeah. And you're now going to take so another swing up at three foot. Yeah. And it's funny because if I was sat to you know, next peg what would be in a match which wouldn't be there, it'd be probably the next one or peg one miss two or peg two miss one type of thing. I'd be looking at now you're thinking, God he's gone down edge early, he's gone down edge early, what's going on? Yeah. But you are not you're not down edge. Not that edge edge. No, you it's got no to do with the edge. No, it's the depth. You're looking for a depth. That was an indication. And it's it? just whether they're happy enough to come in there yet. Which I think they will because be. it's close to the edge. Yeah. Then that's, that's right. a concern that they don't want to be that close to the bank because that spells a bit of danger. They're a bit wary. Yeah. But my thinking is, it's a good day. Exactly what I've glossed over it a bit about the oxygen thing. It's obviously high oxygen day. I really think they're going to be in a feeding mood. It's just up to me to find out where they're going to be happiest feeding. Yeah. And it. I think this could be a nice little spot, this. Now, I'm going to put you on spot here. Mm -hmm. And they're going to love me for this. There we go. You're now facing that way. Yep. Which makes what you're just about to do, because you weren't doing it, I thought, is it me that just then goes, I can't feed shallow because I'm facing it wrong way. And you've done it by, you've upped your face and then you've done it. Yeah. Some people find that hard, but... Let's say that you'd not been smarty pants and done it. <laughs> You're then going, yeah. You, uh, and that, So I'm going to say, how do you feed there when you're fishing there? The key, the key thing, right, is to always, always, always concentrate on what you're actually trying to do at that one time. So if I'm sacrificing this, because I've always got a cat in my hand, knocking me float, I'm not concentrating, not hitting me bites, because I've always got a cat in my hand, then it's counterproductive, isn't it? So instead, yeah, jack of all trades, master of none. I'll just do it when I can. Right. So you've you've hooked your fish, you've done hooked it. Hooked my fish, I've done you it. You just flicked them out. You've you sit you, and you're fishing and you're fed and. Uh, I'm more. Nobody likes a smart ass, you know. <laughs> but I'm more. It's more important for me to make sure that that's dead right because that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Yeah. And the wind's quite tricky. If I I can do it with my cat. I've been actually while well, you, you probably must not notice, but I've been. No, doing no, I it. didn't. I was I'm watching your float. And... Yeah, and I'm I'm just flicking an order now. Yeah. But if it does come to a point where I feel like it's sacrificing what I'm doing there, because look, I can just I've got a nice short cat elastic. I can do it. Um, but, but if it does um, affect what I'm doing, I'll just not do it. But I'm not saying that that's not the easiest natural thing to do. No, it's Because you're not firing it down your pole, you're firing it at 90 degrees yeah. to your pole. So that's probably why I'm... Because I find that hard, as probably most people watching will find that hard. But it's worth the effort, take the time out, take, pick your moments to do it. Even if it means shipping back in from this and then putting a couple of pouches of pellets in or whatever, mm -hmm. just to keep a regular 
amount of pellets going in on that shallow line. It's quite important. So yeah. I don't know what happened there. So be disciplined to think about it, but don't try and But don't sacrifice do what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the sake of it. Again I'm gonna chuck some pellets in. Because it's shallow enough. Yeah, I've got a oh, not like that, not. No. Um yeah, you're keeping it tight, not tight. <laughs> We've also got to pull some fish to start with. Get get gather a few fish. Yeah, because you don't particularly believe, and I can tell just by what you said that you'll probably they might not want to come that close to the bank yet. No. So you're now forcing it a little bit. Unlike when you started, um, and I know you said it okay. was about. See that he's in the mouth, hundred percent. Oh, throwing them I love the, in. I love the confidence. Um, See, you thought away. the fish were going to be where you started, as in physically there, that distance from bank, because yep. it's too deep. So you didn't need to put too much bait, you didn't need to draw them in, whereas you're thinking they might not want to be down there. So you've kind of got to be a bit more forceful. Yeah, just try and drag them up the slope a bit. Like it. Again, that section's come into play. Yeah. This reminds me a little bit of Shearsby Valley, where the water's deep there, same as here, and they go down. And oh god, you've got to be on your wit. You've got to have your wits about you. Yeah. Right. Because they get the momentum up. Yeah. Again, this is a good fish. This. We've got the kit on. We've got O15. We've got green zip on. Yeah. We've got a B911 extra strong on, which is a great hook for strong carp. Yeah. That's a, an eyed. Yeah. Because uh, you've got a banded. We've got one of our mini bands on. Yeah. Um, B911 extra strong. Yeah. I mean, that's a good fit. What you've got, an O15? O15, yeah. yeah. That, so that'd be power line. Power line, yeah. yeah. So a nice, strong kit. Balanced, I'm saying. It's not overgunned, it's balanced. Yeah. But I'm already liking this. I've had that little carp, an indication it was definitely a carp, and then we've got yeah. a nice big cobhouse carp on. And just as guys suggested, that they could be could catch some proper fish. I mean, this is the first one on our journey to a proper bit of a do, I reckon. And that is, that is a big thing as well. Sometimes waiting a bit longer in the edge to get your bite can result in a bigger fish because they na naturally want, then bigger fish want to feed in the edge. Yeah. Well, I know that you're excited about this left hand line. <laughs> Why, have I mentioned it? No. Well, not in the last five minutes. Oh, right. Here it comes. Great big common. Terrible netting. Let's say it's more speed. <laughs> He's a big fish. He's a big fish. And, you know, I'm not um, sat here because I've obviously explained to everybody I'm rubbish at this kind of fishing. But I, I'd be like, he's a big fish. You don't have to rush, do you? Because you don't need many of them. No. And it's becoming evident that this is what we're targeting, isn't it? These are our fish. Look at this. I mean, this is a, a, beauty. a lovely common. And that change, I've been quick to change, but... No, no, it's... it's it hasn't it's taken me long to catch this, which is a big fish, and providing it doesn't come off, it is in the mouth. It's a brilliant lesson. I'm already... Th and, and that fish came when I threw some bait in. Which I think is an important thing to talk about. The bite came after I threw baiting, which yeah, is the ultimate scenario because you're always pulling fish in. Yeah, because boy, there's good fish in me. There's now some pellets that you've thrown in, just as you've hooked him, that are keeping your next carp entertained. Might I need to blow out. I think he's just lively, isn't it? It's great, isn't it? Great big carp like oh. that. I'm excited. Oh, he's right underneath me. I can't see it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's well. Oh, he's doing double figure. Come on, it. In fact, oh, he no, is. No, he's double figure. He's double figure. I'm giving you that. Lip hooked. Beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at him. Cobhouse. Oh, sir. Oh, have I knocked your tea over? 
tell you what, sorry, got boss. one job. Sorry, boss. Ugh. Yeah, you enjoy it, Cap, and I'll not bother with it. <laughs> and there we go. Lovely. Certainly £10. Pound. And that is a start for 10 for that played, margin. Played four and got, I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. Wind just drops, I'm going to try and get some pellets in. Some at like near me float. Some in near float will do. Yep. That'll do. So again, on me loose feed. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. And a proper fast dick like a. Not a gone, it would have yeah. little ding. You can tell, can't you? I, 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 it blows my mind every time when you're fishing on the bottom, how you can get a bite when you, as soon as them pellets hit the surface. Hmm. It must just trigger them, them to snap at it or yeah. something that something goes on. Oh, Mike, see that elastic's bailing me out again? Yeah, it's pulled through that bead. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> He says. Tight enough to hold it for striking. Yep. And fishing just as normal. Yeah. If you're just catching carp that aren't going as for the middle like these ones, it won't ever pull through, but that security of having that extra elastic's always there. Shows extra length. That's what it is. Extra length. Something the um, European anglers do all the time to even more extreme, they'll have they'll often have like two or three foot, and they actually put a loop of elastic up here to trap it because they're fishing for Just thirty pound carp in some of their commercial fisheries. Yeah. So they need as much elastic as possible, and it's they've got always got some reserve. Yeah, I went out fishing with a couple of the German lads last year, and that's exactly what they were doing. Had the meter. Up. They found it weird that we didn't have that. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Nice fish again. Not quite as big as the last one, but we can't be too greedy, can we? No. Not, still, a, small, not a small fish. Still, not, still going to be a six pound plus fish. Yeah. Just getting greedy. First one I've seen swirl near me. Shallow line, and there's another one that's like all of a sudden we've potentially got two irons in the fire here. Yeah, because this line's right. Yep, taking a few little, and you're probably gathering a few fish shallow because I've got no rush to get out there now. Before I would have, if I'd have just carried on there, I'd have been like, well, I've got to get shallow when that's... it's probably too soon. So, by finding a spot where I can on get this by, allows you to leave that, that to, to, to mature. Great work. I like mature. He's not happy, bunny, is he? Big fish again, Mick. I just don't want him to do me under this platform. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that, do they? Uh, no. Only, only the well, it viewers. Could go in the water section. <laughs> but we've had a few of them with them uh, scales we've had. Yeah, we've so let's have some of the old bit. Fish. It's like got his head down, isn't it? Yeah, he's drilling in. Patience. There, we got that, him. Was, that was patience. I mean, he's, he's another eight pound. pound isn't he? He's uh, yeah, right in the mouth again. He's eight plus. He is. Eight plus. Yeah. Not a big fat mirror. <laughs> So all of a sudden we've caught 18 pound maybe in two fish. Yeah. Just by making that change. Yeah. So I think we can safely say that that, that moves work, Mick. That was brilliant. Do you think it's worth looking no, shallow? Or are we just gonna massive lesson? No, I think for the you know, because of course um we could sit there catching fish all day, but let's let's have a look at that shallow line and see if we can maybe prove our theories and what we're thinking and sorry what you're thinking and, I, and i'm observing and then we'll because i think that that now i think that will give us bites all day yeah and you can lose feed that i think i can maintain it with your hand keep it going and yeah. and what i'm really excited about is i think i'm going to catch out of there 
I can definitely catch down here and I've been able to keep that clean. Yeah, and, and that's the, and that's the, the pro progression of a swim. Yeah, as my day. Of your peg, yes. Day, yeah. So let's uh, do a bit of shallow fishing. So, obviously we've worked out that that three foot depth were great. Fantastic. We've been priming the shallow line. Yeah. Um, which, just correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm trying to think why in front of yourself or mm -hmm. in front of you, because the shallow we've gone there, the better it's got. Are you thinking this could be good? I think it could be really good. I think we've, off camera, we've caught quite a lot of fish down here, haven't we? And it's bought us extra time feeding that. Yeah. So although there's not loads of fish bow waving around or anything, I still think it's going to be quite good. Do you think that's important that the longer you can feed that and gather the fish, Shallow, the better? definitely. The later you can do, because obviously every type of fishing gets stronger as the day goes on, and yeah. shallow fishing is exactly the same. But one yeah. thing I'm going to do, mate, because we're later in the day now, I'm going to start priming this edge. Because, and just to explain to everybody, because um, you've actually said it without saying it, because it's later in the day. Why is it because it's later in the day? What what is the significance? And I know that it's not hard and fast. Because I've seen people catch. Yep. some venues down the edge early but generally what's what's your train of thought right i think fish will lot will on plenty of fish as this though, plenty of fish there's clearly a lot of fish in here i think fish will come in the edge as demonstrated here very early but because there's a lot of fish but i think um say you margin Take Shearsby Valley, for example. I know I keep referencing it, but it's a good no, point no, but that's of reference. Where you fish a lot, so it's, you understand. Right, your, ma your match is built into a couple of proportions, and generally you catch between 80 and 100 pounds in the edge. Now, you'll still catch that same weight if you leave it in the last hour, and just because you start on it a bit earlier, you'll still catch the same weight. It just takes you twice as long to get there because you've gone on it too soon. The fish aren't quite ready, they're not quite happy. So you still get to the same weight, but it takes you longer, if that makes sense. That's interesting. So if you can leave it later in the day, you'll still catch that 80 to the 100 pound, which the edge is going to give you. But because the fish are happy, it will kind of take longer then. Oh That's my a great life. As well. <laughs> um, I don't think that realises quite yet what's happened. I've just seen it try to turn twice. Um, so because you've left it longer, the fish are wanting to come in the edge more. They're not as on edge. They'll still catch the same weight in half the time. Right. And to get that impact thing, what I keep mentioning. So I know we're coming to the end of our session now, so I'm happy to go on that in like 20 minutes or so. Yeah. So we just Because they think it's the right time. They think it's the right time. And if you're trying to go there too early, you'll force them. You might catch a few. Yeah, you will catch them and they'll be there, but you can't, you don't catch them as well. That's right. the big thing. They're not they'll come in and they'll do your in, you'll foul up a few. And you think, oh, this is all right. But the reality is you're losing a few and that. Whereas if you just left it later, fed it, and then 10, 15 minutes go on it, you'll have a much much greater success rate. That's interesting. Yeah. It's really something that I've really tweaked this year, that is. Because, like, the shears be, they come in the edge in the first hour. They'll be there. They'll be swimming around in the edge. Because it's the right depth. Because that's where they want to be. Because it's a deep... Yeah, um, a bit like this to be fair. Yeah, yeah but it goes deep quick. They're just never confident there until the last hour. Right. So you get drawn into going there with three hours to go, and then you still catch your 80 to 100 pound. But if you just leave it till three o'clock and then give it the hit, you still catch your 80 to 100 pound in, yeah. in an hour instead of two. So you've freed up yourself some time, so that is massive, Nick. So yeah, you freed up yourself some time to carry on shallow fishing, go short, whatever. Oh my God, that's massive. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, he's could be 15 pound that one. He's a net filler. Jesus. Just nicked on as well. I saw it when you upped it, it kind of, it's turning circle oh, with like Jesus. a ball loader. Oh um, God, that's a big fish that. And he came in like a dog on a lead, didn't he? Oh yeah. Oh. That's... Obviously, on that rig shallow, you've got a different elastic to what Well, that was got. a success, wasn't it? So, obviously, we fed that for ages. Yeah. Set that 12 inches deep. Yeah. Black zip. Little 4 yeah, by 10 Yeah, because that's a lighter elastic than you've had short. Yep. Why do you normally choose a... Ever so slightly sh uh, lighter, because it's a bit like... It's quite nice, in it, when you hook them shallow and they just sort of glide out your peg. 
gives you a bit less, it gives you a bit more time to pick the cat up and feed when you've got the fish on. A bit less fierce. Just a bit less, just a bit smooth, but like, you can use a heavy elastic, of course you can, but it's quite nice when it just glides out your peg and everything's smooth. And, yeah. So yeah, yeah, so I've fed that edge, which I'm really looking forward to fishing now. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you what, this is all right, not So all of a sudden, as predicted, we've got that three foot line in the edge. It's fantastic. Yeah. Looks like we're going to catch a few fish shallow. And yeah. then we've hopefully got that big finish down there. So all of a sudden, yeah, I think we're going to be on for a really big wait today. Now there's a pattern forming. Obviously, the shallow you come short, there's one there, there's one there as well. Um, the more successful it's been. This obviously is dead shallow. Um, so therefore you'd only presume that your sh shallowest deck line, which is right against the bank, will also be where they want to be. Yeah, it should uh, be good. They're, they're happy. Water's warm and you know what we've said at the start of the video is let's find out what the score is and if you were coming back tomorrow you'd probably shortcut all that. Yeah, there's a few uh, things I'd do different, I think. Go, go three foot to kick off yep. while feeding this. Maybe onto this quicker, if that weren't brilliantly fast. And then, I'm going to say, you might even consider your... Well, well, we'll see what happens that edge, but that might be an early-ish edge line. Might be. Because the fish is uh, in shallow water. But again, a I bit mean, like... Look how, how efficient this is. Yeah, this yeah. Is incredible, yeah. isn't it? And we're paying off now, everything's paying off because we've left it and left it and left it. We've caught some fish in the edge, in that three foot. We've bought ourselves time. Yeah. We've not had to rush into feeding that. I know we fed it now for the camera, but in the match situation, I just keep doing this until an hour to go. Then I'd to feed that edge. Yeah. Obviously we're fast boarding everything a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And that's another great big fish. Not big as the last one, but very, very nice. And it's interesting about the depths because this is a deep lake this and i set a rig up at three foot for shallow but if i can get bites at 12 inches for carp i'll always fish that depth i just think it's the right depth for carp yeah well i've noticed those two that you've hooked um, and i learned this i mean i did do a bit of commercial fishing tell you what they're immaculate time, fish aren't they that is absolutely oh, no, immaculate that um would it be fair and, and stop me from talking rubbish would it be fair to say that when you actually hook your fish shallow, depending on how they swirl and it tells you whether you're at the right depth? I know missing bites is massive and you're like shallow, shallow, so you stop getting bites and then that's the right depth. But I always remember you hook them and the fish are like kind of level, therefore they swim away like that yeah. because they've not had to come up or go down to where the bait is. Yeah, I mean, so, I've never really thought about it like that, but you probably there probably is something in that. I just um, remember it when I used to go to Woodlands a little bit years ago and it were shallow fishing and, and I think it was in Bowman that said to me, just you know you're right there, because when you're up them you don't they don't get upset, they kind of just yeah, like happy. that you know, just kind just of lollops around a bit. Turn because it? it's like what's happened there, I'm feeding and and then something's not right and it just swims off because but when you're at the wrong depth, they have to kind of come at an angle to to grab your bait and then you get like a and it nearly either pulls the pole out of your hand or it thrashes around on the surface and uh, that, like I said it might be rubbish but no, it makes sense. I, I just looked how they took it and I thought you're almost fishing at the, the depth that they're laid at the, um, it's, it's, I don't know what it is about that depth that sort of 12 inches but it just always seems for carp the right depth like this is a deep lake so you'd assume that fishing two to three foot might be quite good well i'm not being funny the size of that first one but again if it, were, if it actually came any shallower as a fish it back would have been out of water <laughs> nearly a foot deep itself oh. <laughs> if it's top fin was stuck out of the water its mouth would be uh, eight inches and it's shallow so it's probably not far off it's just it's subsurface like with shallow it's all it's just really important to get into a nice little routine for your feeding there's an odd fish actually coming in you can normally tell when you're going to get one because you can normally see him coming in and if I do see one I'll stop feeding and just try and slap him on I think I mentioned it earlier like grind them on and I think that's so important sometimes yeah I mean what's that watching you effort equals reward at that game you're working at that look you're just flicking it over flicking it over 
you fed, you fed, you fed, drawing your fish in, they and you stop it. feeding, so that he's like looking for pellets. I don't like obviously just completely stop. I'll still flick an odd pellet in because you've got to keep that momentum of bait going in. But <clears throat> if there is one there, and you can, it's obvious there's one there. I'll, I'll give it a few minutes just to try and catch him. Yeah, just to trick him into. Because you, just because you're shallow fishing, it's almost like you trap set in a little bit. Like you've got to build it and build it and build it yeah, until one comes there. in. Yeah, and there. then you've got to catch him then. Yeah. Because these are big fish. It's not like you're gonna have ten fish there. No. It might be one or two. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's an interesting. Ooh. Well, we're only gonna say you probably won't miss a bite, shallow. Yeah, you um, do. Obviously, when obviously went to bite, Joe. <laughs> Liner. <laughs> Artistic license that way back because that almost dinked, yeah, it like it does. Down. And that's that's what I'm saying. It's not it's getting swam away, it dinks, it sucked it in, and like a proper bottom back. Yeah, and, and this is the advantage of that lighter elastic. Look, I can just ship, get a pole out of the way, let the fish yeah, sort of play itself, brilliant. carry on with me feeding. Because I believe the most, the, I've said this multiple times, I believe most of your work shallow fishing is when you've either got a fish on or when you're back here. You know, you can if you can the longer you can stay away from the fed zone, the quicker you are likely to get a bite. Because they're obviously scared of the pot. And if you can stay out of the water a little bit, it might sound counterproductive, but it's not. No, no because a bit like so I'm never in a rush to get them in. Feeding it for the first couple of hours. That's when you can see cup uh, You've fed it for the first couple of hours. It's almost like what you're saying now, if you can feed while you're playing that, you're letting the fish settle in mm -hmm. when the setting's on. Another great fish. <coughs> so I mean, that's three in no time, shall it? Yeah, that, that's efficient. So I just had to, just had to retrieve my cup. <laughs> um, what a comment, the lovely, isn't there? The lovely uh, Emily and Abby in the cafe have just provided a lovely tea and a coffee. Because there's a fantastic facilities inside. Oh, it's a great fishery, this is. Oh yeah, it's got everything. Um, if I dare say it, lads, you could uh, bring the family. Um, they've got a bit of a wildlife pack. We're not put back and all this. But you can fish while uh, they're entertained. It's brilliant. So we've got a lovely coffee, but you know, back to business. I'm just going to put another dollop in. Oh, yeah. the edge. You get you're That's getting excited now. Yeah, I, I just I feel like it's happening big time now. Yeah. Fish are feeding. Fish are feeding. They're giving me the signs and you might not know this, but as we were fishing out there, I saw the water move down there like a almost like the water bouncing. That only happens when they're uh, getting giddy. Giddier than me when I start seeing them in the edge. And that sometimes it's the hardest part about edge fishing. Resisting the urge to go down there. Yeah. Too, so. I think we'll catch catch one more out there, shallow mate. Yeah, and yeah, then should we have a, I'm, I'm, a look at the rigs and stuff? I'm spying down the edge. Before we go down the edge. Yeah, because I'll not get you off I'll not be able to get your attention again once you start catching. No, down. so I think should catch one more out there. Yeah, perfect timing. Talk and, talk. and we'll have a we'll have a little another tea break and a, a chat about rigs. Yeah, yeah talk me through my rigs because I'm I'm gonna have these when I'm putting my wires, I'm taking them with me. Gonna, like you say, effort equals reward with that shallow game. There's yeah. one there, there's, there's one swirling, so. Yeah, because you've drawn him in with while you've been playing. Well, that I've been fish. playing that fish, so. And then you're now going to. Hopefully, captain. Slap, slap him on. Because what you're recreating is the noise that the pellet's making Ooh. without the three off rigs. Show that bow wave. Yeah, he did. There oh, we go. No, he didn't. I mean, obviously, in a match, you would never come up there until you really needed to because yeah. they're big fish anyway. So, if you can catch four in, oh, I don't know how long this clip's been 10 minutes, yeah. for over 20 pounds, and you just got to keep at it. But it's just great fishing, isn't it? Perfect. And it's a little bit we mentioned in the very first intro about depth of water and oxygen levels and all that. And as predicted, I felt like maybe it could be a bit too deep, and it's proven that. Yeah, because this is the depth. Like they want to be in the upper layer. Yeah. And possibly out in the open water. Yeah. They're comfortable there, aren't they? They, they? 
the feel safe in the middle of the lake. And not where you go. Like that. Yeah. They're just massive, aren't they? Thing, yeah, I know this. Great fish. So I think that's a nice little bit of shallow fishing. That's perfect. Well demonstrated. And we'll have a look at the rigs. Get him in the old net. Another stunning cobhouse common. So, obviously, rigs we've obviously talked about rigs. So, yep. in detail, um, there's obviously your your type of fishing, I've noticed this, you try and keep things quite simple. Mm -hmm. So, you don't have, oh, I just have this and one of them. and the, So, you select a type of float, you have a limited amount of sizes because you want to keep it practical. For, so I know you'll just go, I have a 4x12 and a 4x14 for shallow mm -hmm. and I use a 4x14 and a 4x16 because I want it to be positive. And I think that's brilliant. And tell us, in that kind of sort of style, I, I you attack a shallow rig, you, your three foot deep rig, and then you, and your margin rig. I think that's a great one to start with our out there rig yeah four by 14 cypri which yep. is such a good go anywhere float but why why that particular float it's, or that style it's of float, stable, right, it's stable for six mil pellets the 1.7 bristle registers them quite nicely as well yeah um i just think it's a nice all-round float you can't really go wrong with it it's strong it sits nice it's stable it does the job no frills exactly what i need hmm. 4x14 route there, and I've, I've actually used, used the same rig in that three foot, but just obviously chopped it down. Um, I like that float, I use it an awful lot. Tell me about that shouting pan, because that's not everybody's natural choice to do it like that. For something I picked up from Steve Ringer 20 years ago about the strung bulk. Okay. Um, it hasn't really got, it's got no rhyme or reason to it, why it works, but it just does. It just seems a little bit, if you just put a bulk on your hook length knot, just seems a bit I don't know. clunky. Yeah, a bit clunky. A bit clunky. And because I'm looking out and thinking, there's you said there's no ram and reason. I think there's a massive reason. It probably is. It's smooth. It's smooth. It probably curves a little bit when you when it catches up with itself. More forgiving. A bit more forgiving while still being positive because they're number nines. So it's nice and positive. Getting the rig down. If it was a four b sixteen or a four b eighteen cipri, I'd use number eight. Nice and positive. Nice and smooth. So there's actually no dropper as such. No. Like, it's a, a bulk and then you're up carries it down there but it's a soft bulk soft bulk yeah very in fact very that's what we might call it soft, soft bulk uh, 6 inch hook length 015 16 b911 extra strong eyed little tiny little bait band and then my 6 mil pellet on so nothing complicated I've got perhaps the most important part of the rig the short line yep because I'm fishing inches? in 3 foot yeah probably a little bit less if anything um, very very short just so that when you're fishing hard pellets you can discipline yourself to just keep lifting yeah you hit them quick bites you can I noticed you had a quick go off camera and it was like a lovely little dink in, dinky bite and you're just straight into it and yeah it's because just, it's all you know, nice and all in control yeah tight and obviously the further out you fish the longer that's got to get but try and keep it as short as possible make such a right. so on, on some venues because um, if you do miss a bite you want to just lower it and get it straight back in fishing again because that fit this fish can still be there so you want to be able to just lift it and get straight back some in. venues obviously there's a limit to the distance between the float and the bolt it but i've also seen some anglers including yourself where you've got to get tight in underneath the margin. Mm, I'll show you and you've had that down as tight, super tight. Yeah, yeah, oh. I mean, this is the oh, Sorry, we're I, gonna, I didn't even see that, so yeah. You've... We're gonna do it now. Um, this is my edge rig. I've got blue zip, which is the strongest one we do. Judging by the fish that I think we're gonna catch down there, based on what we've caught out there, it's gonna be perfect. Blue zip, I've got a four by 16 Fury, which is heavy float. I mean, it's 30 inches deep. So that's actually heavier. Yes. Than the one you just used in yep. deeper water. So, yep. why? Um, right. Obviously, when you're fishing in shallow water for big carp like these, clearly are, you get a lot of water movement. So I need, and I'm on a very, very, very small bit like that to fish on before mm -hmm. it slopes off. Yeah. So if I use a too light a float, as soon as a fish comes in, it's just going to be wafting around and I might be off bottom. Ah, on so bottom. when you say water movement, you don't mean tow like you do no, out no, in open I mean water. No, no, fish moving. You mean yeah. 
So I need fish wafted. A, a nice positive rig mm -hmm. that I can pin up against the bank and hold a little tight line to it with, with that short line. And I can hold it right against the bank and then almost like the fish will donk themselves on, if that makes sense, because I'm holding it right over the top of my pile of bait that I'm going to feed with that bit. Just keeping the line so between the float and your bulk is tight as possible, yeah. I'm in control, that's that's the big word, control, I think. Isn't that crazy? Because mm -hmm. most people go lighter as they're closer to the bank, they yeah. get one there. Yeah. And uh, I used to do that for the 10 floats and stuff, but it's just a nonsense. You've got to be, for these big carp, you've just got to be in control of your rig. And that's an hard bulk, as in they're all hard bunched bulk, together? Yeah. yeah. Go on then, tell me the I've, difference between that. I've got that. to get it so tight against the bank. There, I'm, I'm almost flicking it about a bit when I'm fishing away from the bank in that three foot. Flicking it down the slope and dragging it up the slope. With this, I'm just trying to pin it as hard as I can to the banking. So, which we'll show you next. You're putting the bait in the right place quicker. With yeah. Because I might a, only a get that presentation for a few seconds before a fish moves it and I have to reset it. Got you. But I've got to be in that over my little pile of bait while that pile of bait Brilliant. is still a, still a thing. It looks like there's more lead above floor than there is. Yeah, I've got three below. number eight. So that's what is that? Three inches. Mm. And I've got three number eights there. Just everything's doing everything to keep that float still. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Some thick leg on that as well, isn't it? Yeah, blue zip. I love it for edge fishing. You can just get them in, no problems, no questions asked. 019, size 12. No because problem. by the time they come into that swim, you want to make them like they're feeding, you can be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and then for the shallow, it's just me all about shallow rig really. I say 12 inches is my favorite depth for shallow fishing. Um, I've got a little 4x10 big head on there. I just love them. Yeah. They're great. Uh, again, 18, 911 extra strong, 017 main line, uh, and then black zip for shallow fishing because, as I mentioned while we were fishing, I quite like to hook the fish and let them just sort of yeah, fly yeah. out and give me a bit more time to feed while I'm playing the fish. Dead simple. And that's it. I've got them rigs. I've got uh, I've got another shallow rig that's a bit deeper, but it's the same. Just in case they start that a bit lower. Yeah. And that's it. Strong tackle is a must for carp, I can't stress that enough. Strong hooks, strong line, they're not tackle shy. As much as I want them to be tackle shy because I'm a fine line, yeah. Mm. It doesn't matter because the ultimate, as we talked about When the water's warm, the water's coloured. I mean, these fish, we don't have many under seven pounds today. No, they're going to, yeah. yeah you, and you've got to get them in. Because everything's geared up into it. It's all balanced because obviously you've upped your elastic, you've upped your line, you've upped your hook size. Even the float size. sizes. Um, Brilliant. And I, I can't, I'm itching to get down there. So one thing I will uh, yeah, I'm itching to get chat down. about is the pops as well, because this is the real big point when you're doing this trap setting style, what we're going to do down the edge is getting your pot size, because what it's all, a, it's all a balancing act. Getting the right size pot that A, pulls enough fish in without foul looking them. So if you, so the, the enough, idea, enough bait to draw if the you fish. put that much micros in every single go, you get loads of fish there, but you might not get a clean bite. No, because the, the, there's too much bait flying all over the place. So it's all about using your pots. They all pop yeah. off your pole, getting the right balance of putting just the right amount of feed in to get that clean bite. Mm. If you put too little amount of bait in, you might never pull one in. The first Very bite. easy to get excited. And fill that up every time. And get, you, I'm, I'm going to slaughter them down yeah, edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep piling bait, piling bait. And, and you get a load of fish there, and it looks amazing because you've got tails everywhere. A bit like you've just done shallow, where you've gone feed, 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 draw him in. And you've stopped feeding to make sure that he's looking at your bait, yeah. not all the fish. Sounds so obvious, doesn't it? But it's easily missed. And I'll have um, a variety, little pop, a little box here, with all different pot sizes in. I've got the medium on there, but I put the large on. I've even got the face pots as well, which I quite like um, for big carp as well. So use your pots. Use them. They're they're they're, they're 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 do the work. They they do all the work for you when you trap set. So That's brilliant. Carry some pots with you, and there we go. Right, Mick, it's time to go down the edge. Why not? I'm running out of tea. Got to stress, you wouldn't come off shallow today. No, because that's the thing in it. You know, I mean, obviously we're trying to In a say, match. You'd have to I just keep going. I mean, look, they're still there. Yeah. They're, um, I think the wind is giving confidence warm. to the cover. It's warm. Warm. Yeah. Water's warm. But you never know. We might go down here and it'd be uh, electric. Like that. Yeah, electric. because that's the old textbook commercial match scenario isn't it? Yeah. you know you go down edge and last whatever and you catch a few big lumps catch with uh, seven or eight great big units yeah we're just what we're doing we're trying to set a trap so we've got 
that part with the holes in. Yeah. You've got that claggy micro as we talked about. Heavy. It's gone, down, it's gone down in like Try a to get it as accurate as we can. We've got that heavy float on which allows me to swing it up against that slope and then pin it against that bank, which is so important. It's a little bit over depth that rig. Two or three yeah, inches. It's so steep. Yeah, and I've just got to give myself a bit of leeway. So I'm swinging it in against that bank like that mm -hmm. and then pinning it. And if I get a bow wave off or I get a big swirl or anything like that, I'll come back and repeat the process because I've got to assume my little claggy pile's been moved. Disturbed. So you've got to watch your float carefully, <clears throat> see what's happening. Yeah, because even though you, you don't get a, a bite bite and you'll a fish, you're then thinking if you've had a yeah. You know, swirl and because it's so steep, does this, yeah, that bait's going to come off the tailed your bait away. Yeah, that, you, the bait's going to want to come away from that slope anyway because it's so steep. Yeah, so I, I need to see that yeah. there. You see that? Yeah, a bit like method feeder fishing. Yeah, see, I'm going to come in again. So I've got to assume that was a carp there. Set it back up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is a bit like method feeder fishing. It, it? Is, yeah, you, yeah. You're putting up bait on the top of a ball of feed. Yeah exactly what it is we're trying to recreate and of course trap. once upon a time and then it's people about people used to pile baiting down the mine that's what i mean it's all about using your pots to get that just the correct amount one's come in there we've got that medium on i think there's a, there's a few fish there now which is good just let it fall out the pot like that put your float out and you rig onto it let it swing in that could be a 4B18 float as well, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, because you... It doesn't matter, it's about getting it against that bank. It's not delicate, it's about accuracy. Mm -hmm. And being able to do what you need to do with it. Ooh, my yeah, God. That'll happen, didn't it? It did, didn't it? Go okay, through the process. Just yeah, because that's mouth, it's maybe bolted off. Mm -hmm. You're like, that's my bait gone. That's yeah, my trap gone. That's my trap gone, so I've got to restart all over again. And because you've not piled it in like we used to do there's no build up there no start again on fish on fish it seems to have been you're not going to get that situation where you've got tails everywhere and all that jazz really when it's the deepest fish that's the last thing you want it's been a common theme that today joe that you've you know i mean i was uh, i did when you first started and i said um, my nature is to want to draw fish in and you'll fish from one at a time and you've proved that because you've gathered one, caught it, gathered it, caught it. You're not just, right, I want to... Because you don't want five card down there, do you? If I can help it. Two, two at most. Yeah, because, one or two. Hey, uh, joking apart, there's not enough room, there's not enough room in your little spot for that to two ten pound cards. The turning circle of the small light tip. The perfect, the perfect situation is if you've got like a little V or a crease in the bank where literally only one can get in. That is the perfect set. Which reduces line bites, yep. increases the chances of hooking it. I always remember back in the day, I hate that saying, but back in the day when he used to go to the Oaks all the time. Yeah. Robbie Minikin was a master at shallow water cap, skinny silly. Um, and he used to create himself a little V in the reeds in the edge. So that literally only one fish could get in at a time. And at the time, I was like, what a load of nonsense. But now, obviously, that's been more experience. It, it, it is to makes total sense. There's a few coming in now. So maybe that that might just be too much bait, but we'll, we'll figure it out. But well, because it's sloping away, you'd like to think that all your bait's going away. To oh, it's waste. gone, yeah. Yeah. It'll be gone. Like maybe you have to put the bigger one on. Cool. <clears throat> Few liners there, Mick. Mm. The jiggery poker. Yeah, it's resisting the urge to to lift. Yeah. So a soft bait, obviously, it will come off. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. It's lovely, clean bite. Oh, yeah, I know we missed a couple of bites, but. Yeah. That was me just getting warmed up, really. <laughs> now uh, we can work on this now because we've got one. We've got the blue one, so we can keep under control. And it's funny, isn't it? Because, of course, if you were up one shell, you'd now be feeding because you're trying to gather them. But you'd like to think that there's, they want to be in the there'll area. Be one in, yeah, there'll be one in the area. That bait will have kicked up a bit of cloud and whatnot. And then you'll focus And then I'll 
try and pinpoint them back down to yeah. where I want them to catch them. Which is funny because one of the times up like out there, but slightly opposite where you've gathered it and then you're making it work for the fold, whereas doing what you've just done there, you're actually now going to pinpoint it mm -hmm. and with a little, little mouth trap. You're making feed feeder time. fishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're making feeder fishing, mate. And Granted, that's not the massive fish that we were catching out there, but it's still a start. And if we can have a nice little finish now, down the edge, mm. but we're not going to we're not going to get giddy. We're not going to big pot or anything like that. We're just going to again repeat the process. Because if you can do that, wait two or three minutes for every bite, that's perfect in my opinion. Because you know you always have a clean bait, then you're over a clean. Yeah, spot on. Clean bottom. And that clag just works a treat. It's almost like a ball of paste, I suppose. You know you get there eventually, don't you? Yeah. Put me up in it, mate. <laughs> so if, if that was just loose micros on that fall, it'd just plume out and... They'd be everywhere. Cook, yeah, they would, yeah. You'd have chaos. And, and you wouldn't be creating that little target, would you? Sometimes you have to put them in to get them there. Right. So your initial big pot can be a pot of micros and then tighten them up with a stodge when you actually start fishing it. That can be like the ground bait thing, like sometimes they do want that to get them in in the first place. Right. But yeah, I think that the, there's enough fish feeding that we don't probably don't need that today. Now that looks like a bit of a lump, jaw. Does he realise he's got a knock in his mouth yet? Going on, yeah. No, no. I'm looking at the swirl is. I'm looking at the swirl is left behind. <laughs> we've got the game off. Without a doubt. It's funny because your float were a bit quieter then. Yeah. Obviously, we've had a few rattles off some small fish, and then, and then all of a sudden it's. And it's sat there, and we've got one. And I think it probably sums up what has been a spectacular day, doesn't it? Because this is a lovely big edge fish. It's incredible. It's a fantastic pool. They call them pools down here, don't they? Ponds where I come from. <laughs> or lakes. When the finger moved to the Midlands, they used to call them pools. Pools, yeah, it's the Midlands pool. thing. And this is Wyatt's pool. Wyatt's pool. Cobb House. Just very, outside. Very, uh, excellent guests, aren't they? Just outside Worcester. Uh, oh, they've, they've been fantastic. And the, and the fish have not been too bad either. He, uh, well, he's a bit of a, a he's a bit of a unit. Nearly as big as you, Joe. Bigger. the best till last day. Eh? He's an absolute beauty. He's uh, fifteen pound him. Every every cat. every inch of it. Well, Joe, I mean, obviously we've sort of come to a new venue. We've. Um, Explored Cobb House. First time I've set eyes on it. I've learned a lot. More about the fact that depth is paramount. Yep. Changes are massive. You've got to keep on your toes. Keep exploring. And then trying to read the signs as well. I think it's something you've taught me. Reading the signs of, right, I'm getting bites, but I'm not hooking them. Come a bit shallower, a bit shallower. And you come a bit shallow, which has then gone right. So that must mean that the shallow line will be good, and therefore the edge line will be good. Yeah, you can only react with the there's another there's another swirl yeah, there yeah, on that line. Yeah, now I think I think the bananas ready to be had. Time of day as well. Time of day, yeah. Massive. But exactly what I mentioned earlier about timings has happened in our edge a little bit today. You definitely catch your seven eight cart down there, no problem at all. But because we've gone down there a touch early, we're still going to catch them, but it's going to take us. Two hours to catch them, seven or eight cards. And you've not so maximised on your opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Whereas if I'd have left it, just that, so I don't know what time is, but if I'd, I know if I'd have left it. It's camp o'clock. Yeah, yeah camp o'clock. So if, if I'd have yeah. started feeding it now to, to get to you four o'clock, yeah. yeah, it'd be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that, we're talking obviously like two, you know, I mean, we're obviously matchmen, um, and some of our viewers will be matchmen, and some people are pleasure fishermen. Yeah, the great day fishing. But the same you thing applies that. You know, think about how your day is going to progress. 
um, plan it out, swim, peg, peg management. Mm -hmm. We've got two things that I've sort of logged in there. We've got peg management, and we've also then got swim management, and I mean swim by each the short line and the margin line and the shallow line, and keeping them doing it at the right time, amount of feed. Love the simplicity of the rigs. That were brilliant. Yep. And um, the approach is simple, isn't it? Being in the keep, right place at the right time. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. And um, and we've had a great day. I mean, I don't know what we've ended up catching, but it's a lot. A lot. And uh, if we just carry on now till four o'clock match ending time, I reckon you could put another hundred pound on easy. Yeah, you'd finish up. Just keep putting more and more nets in, won't you? But well, thanks for the great lesson, Joe. I've really that. enjoyed it. Good and that. Um, it's been nice having someone. Uh, yeah, we walk, we've walked through it, haven't we? And, um, I mean, as we're sitting here now, look, there's one swirl in there. Yeah, there is, yeah. It's happening now. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure the, uh, the viewers will have enjoyed it as much as I have, and I think you've enjoyed yourself. So um, we'll look forward to the next session. Brilliant. Cheers, mate. See you next time and teach you about feeder culture. Let's do it. Brilliant. It's a date. <laughs>